Today we celebrate the Dalai Lama as he turns 80. And in an extended interview, we ask about his hopes and fears for the future of Tibet, his thoughts on China, on international terrorism, and what it means to live with compassion in the 21st century. Do you feel the same leader that you were when you started out? Are you a different man? Myself. Now, firstly, you know, a uh, big difference of age. <laughs> and then when I left, you see, uh, Tibet, there's a lot of hair here. <laughs> now, not much less. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you see, uh, 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 I think I may say, so sometimes people say, time is money, money, money is time. So similarly, I think I, I want to say, time is the experience. Uh, experience also, you see, like time. So time passes. Uh, and particularly, difficult time, difficult period. That's the best period to gain more experience. So I can definitely say, now, today, today is this person. I think more experience than at the time of 1959 <laughs> or early 60s. From the very early years, you were recognized as the Dalai Lama at the age of two. Do you carry any memories of those early years of oh, your yes. childhood? Yes. Yeah. I think, uh, uh, I think as it's a uh, the usual way, you see, the, when, when very young, you see, you see uh, some experience of frightening. Mm or some experience of uncomfortable. Those events uh, remember more clearly. <laughs> One I know, I, I, I remember it's my cousin, monk, it's who carry sort of a lot of sort of prayer, so some text book. Oh, and so then I not yet, so, I cannot stand, go like this. So. Uh, I approached to him, and then his prayer books, you see, uh, some way is a troubled. So he lost his temper, and uh, uh, the cash caught me, and then he's here, tuck, 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 like that. <laughs> that I still remember. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the prayer book. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That I remember. That, that I think, one strange thing. I, I remember then, you see, of course, our village, village, no toilet, mm -hmm. proper to toilet, just open toilet. So I went, uh, uh, I think, the hard work. Uh, so while I, uh, I, I sort of sit, uh, sit like that, huge camel, black camel, approaching towards me. Still, I remember, you see, that color of that camel and the size of that camel. Then I immediately run away. <laughs> my my bowel business is stopped. <laughs> Disturbed. That I remember. The camel. <laughs> Huge camel. <laughs> At my place. Because you see, quite close with Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So a lot of camels there. I said that that particular day, you see. Huge one more to see all the normal color. Then the head in this side, black. <laughs> <laughs> and you have said that you may be the last Dalai Lama. Mm. Explain that thought to us and any sense you have of your past lives, past beings. Now we are 21st century. So I said this, uh, actually Lama institution, friendly speaking, I say, you see, develop during feudal system. So society changed, have to change. So some of these institutions, some sort of uh, influence mm -hmm. the existing society sort of system. Now that outdated. Therefore, 
uh, as early as uh, 1669, I publicly, officially, I announced the very institution of Dalai Lama should continue or not up to Tibetan people. If majority of Tibetan people at the time of my death feel now this uh, century-old institution not much relevant, then automatically cease. And then, then my sort of basic sort of belief, world belongs to seven billion human beings. And each nation belongs uh, to the people. With respect, if may I say so, uh, Great Britain belongs to the, uh, uh, the, the people, not the royal family. <laughs> In Japan also, I mentioned that. Do you think it's time to end the royal family as well? No, no that is your business. I think so, so long, you see, you feel that is some kind of unique symbol. Then, okay, no problem but you practice fully democratic system. So that's quite sort of, I, say, I think, a quite realistic approach. So, so in any way, uh, like the bad case then, or, or sometimes in America, I expressing publicly, America belongs to 300 millions of American people, not a Republican party or democratic party. These parties are serving to the people. Mm -hmm not the ruler of the country. So let's talk so, about... So me, now. So Dalai Lama, uh, so therefore, is a Tibetan should govern by Tibetan people, by Tibetan. So the proper way is the democratic system. People choose their leader. And so long people's confidence there, they can carry. Once that sort of confidence no longer, then change. That's a very good system. So therefore, 2000, uh, actually 2001, I already started, you see, elected political leadership. Then my position is semi-retired position. Then 2011, now I totally uh, are retired. Do you think Tibet will ever be an independent country in your lifetime? Now uh, that? Uh, we have to think realistically what's the real benefit to our people. I always uh, admire the spirit of European Union, member state, for example, France and Germany in the past, they say quite also often is fighting each other. One my great sort of friend, actually I consider my tutor uh, of quantum physics, von Wezika, and David Bohm. You see, I learned uh, something about quantum physics from these two uh, physicists. So, you know, he once told me, when he was young, every German eye, French is their enemy. Similarly, French eye, German is their enemy. Uh, we are talking in 1990, in 90s. So then he told me, now that kind of attitude completely changed. So European Union, you see, develop. So common interest is more important than individual sovereignty or something like that. So therefore, uh, we are a separate nation. Uh, but, you see, for common interest, China, economically, you see, uh, I mean, rap rapidly is developing, very good. So, uh, Chinese, also human being, we also human being. You see, too much emphasis, Tibetan and Chinese sort of differences. You see, again, you see, I think we have to think same human being, same right, in modern time, the concept of one side victory, one side defeat, is unrealistic. So you think that... So, so therefore, since 1974, we publicly, sort of, ex, sort of officially announced we are not seeking independence. We are very much willing 
remain within the People's Republic of, Republic of China, provided they should respect Tibetan culture, Tibetan unique language, and Tibetan environment. Do you think now China is doing more good than harm for Tibet? That may be too early to, to say, <laughs> but you see, there is possibility now going that direction. Preservation of Tibetan culture, Tibetan rich Buddhist tradition and environment is a mutual benefit. Now more and more Chinese, now Chinese leaders, particularly now present leaders, seems to seem more realistic, uh, look more wider perspective. I think unlike other, the previous leader, they just used to think that way. Now this person is in more wider sort of perspective. So, so we'll see. You said... But definitely answer, you see, a totalitarian is a countries sometimes is unpredictable. <laughs> so difficult to say definite. <laughs> but there is some signs of hope. You said... Uh at one stage that the CIA funded the Free Tibet movement, you thought to fight communism through you. Did you ever feel that Tibet was being used by the West to take on China? At that time, you see some kind of American sort of policy contended China. Uh, so they, uh, uh, use sort of opportunity, like Vietnam case and Tibet case, uh, and Korea, of course, Korean War, in order to stop the communist sort of expansion. Mm. Then the South Korea saved, and Vietnam failed. <laughs> Tibet case also, although you see, uh, at that time, you see, my elder brother, Yalu Chandru, you see, involved the CIA with these things. He top secret. He even, you see, uh, not sort of telling detail. Broadly, I know, but he uh, uh, not telling all these sort of secret things. <laughs> Sometimes we also you see, have some disagreement mm. like that. Then I think 72, when Kissinger visit uh, Peking, and then Nixon visit, then everything was changed. The Free Tibet movement has become very fashionable. It's attracted Hollywood, the Richard Gears. It's you've been welcomed at Glastonbury. What do you think is the is the appeal, particularly of this cause? This Buddhist tradition, the Buddha stated. Oh, my follower should not accept my teaching out of faith, out of devotion, but rather thorough investigation <laughs> and experiment. Mm. So that's a very similar scientific way, not relying on Buddha's own quotation, but investigate, investigate. Therefore, we also should develop genuine interest about science. And many scientists also now showing interest about Buddhist psychology or science of mind. So, it's a number of reasons we see people who are showing interest about Tibet, not just a political reason. There are some people, of course, uh, it's a political reason also, you see, there. But mainly, I think, Tibetan culture, rich Buddhist tradition. I want to talk about faith. And then, then I think, uh, if may I say so, this is, of course, a little bit silly. I think many people showing Interest because my smile. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about faith and science uh, with you a bit further, but you have also been met on this trip by protesters, those who say that the rights of Shugden Buddhists yes. have been banned in Tibet. Can you explain your response to Shugden Buddhism and oh, yeah. why they appear to feel outlawed by you and your teachings? It is my duty is to tell what is the reality. Whether listen or not, up to individual. 
So but, these people, you see, uh, they do not know the whole sort of story. And recently I was in Australia. This is some Shungjin group. This is some protest. They uh, uh, stop lying. <laughs> so including some young boy uh, wear monk's rope and shouting. I really felt it's a pity. They do not know what was the four centuries sort of history and the recent history. I think these people should visit Tibet and then further investigate what really effect, you see, due to worship is disparate, mm. much sectarian conflict like that. I want to talk about conflict mm. and religion. You referred to the work of ISIS as unthinkable. Does Buddhism have a practical response to ISIS, to international terrorism, to violence done in the name of religion? I want to express, you see, there recently some in Tunisia. Now, this morning I saw some news, I mean, news, newspaper, mm. some pictures of some of these victims. Mm. Oh, that's, I think, uh, a thing which we, seven billion human beings, should take seriously. How to reduce these things? How to build a peaceful century, harmonious century? That ultimately depends on compassion, sense of concern of their life, sense of concern or their happiness, and that respect their right. Once that develops, irrespective of whether believer or non-believer, once we see that uh, through education, through awareness, once we develop that, then this uh, unhappy sort of what's the instance or this, these things. That Do you we, ever have dark moments when you look at what's happening around the world in Tunisia, in Syria? in Iraq, and you think the world is not getting better. There isn't compassion. I'm speaking to myself. That is, that is not working. When, when I saw a picture ready to behave, behave with some kind of kasada, mosque, right? So that indicates they themselves you see, realize there's something wrong. If they truly believe this is right, then must show their face proudly. They're doing something. At the same time, they cover their face. I don't think that's right. Mm. So I think, I think education, awareness, what really helping for their cause through that kind of violence. And even you see the great nations I think American policy regarding Iraq eliminate Hussein. Motivation is good. Uh, goal, the object or goal is good to bring democracy in Iraq, but method become wrong. What so do you now, think of now, now, uh, after a few days, I'm going to meet my longtime friend, uh, Mr. Bush. So as a human being, I love. I love him. Very good. On human level, his policy matter is concerned, but sometimes it's difficult. So after the Iraq crisis happened, another my meeting with President Bush, then I told him, I love you, I respect you, but some of your policy is concerned, I have some great sort of reservation. I told him, he laughing <laughs> like that. Now, uh, now next, the beginning of next, I mean, the next, after a few days, I'm going to him. Do you I mean, think politicians do good? Hmm? Do you think politicians do good? A lot of people don't trust politicians now. That also is a politics. Also is a part of human activities, and particularly related with community, related with the uh, country. Then politics must carry with inner value, compassionate value. Then politics can be transparent. That brings trust. Politics is part of human sort of, as the profession. Oh, 
in any human sort of profession, any human activities, including preaching, teaching, carry out of negative emotion, teaching also bad, dirty teaching, uh, dirty religion. So politics also, you see, so long the politician's mind, not very transparent or tra uh, transparent, and something uh, self-centered self interest, then politics also become dirty politics. And you've talked about science and faith, and I think written in the past that if science were to prove certain Buddhist claims wrong, it would be impossible to carry on believing them. Uh, Richard Dawkins said the danger of Islam, Christianity, Judaism is the unthinking reliance on faith. As somebody who appreciates the sciences, do you support that? One Indian, my friend, physicist, nuclear physicist, is so once she told me in the West, quantum physics is something new. In India, over 2,000 years, <laughs> that concept already there, she told me. Well, let so, me. so therefore, you see, then, you see, as my sort of contact with scientists, now first casualty is now I am no longer believe existence of Mount Miru. Mount Miru, you know, world flat. And Mount Miru in the center, and the sun and moon go like that. Now I am no longer sort of believe that. So many Tibetans, you see, believe that. What is the sort of what's the story? When Obolo land on moon, when some picture appears, then I show to some Tibetan scholar. Uh, look. Now, uh, this is moon, some, some rocky area, mm. some rock, this moon. And then that monk, that scholar, is just on me, oh, that may be part of Mount Miru. <laughs> <laughs> but there are areas now so, no problem. Where, where faith and science are creating uh, new possibilities or new difficulties. Dying with dignity, this is a very current controversy in our world now. Should people have the right to assist their loved ones to die when they are suffering terribly? And firstly, let me see, let me say, the a previous Pope, uh, uh, I can't remember the name, you see, I usually call Polish Pope, Italian Pope, uh, then uh, German Pope, now Argentine Pope. Oh, uh, so the German Pope, as he once you see, express reason and faith must go together. So uh, reason means now science. Mm. Science and faith can go together, and it is sort of useful that way. I think in, in the early part of the 20th century. I think science and spirituality is something to separate way. Now, with the help of quantum physics, mind become more important. Mm. And medical science also now say mental peace of mind is very important for physical health. So, you see, these two things, spirituality and science, now come closer, closer, closer. All major religion, same, talking, Love, forgiveness, tolerance, contentment. Some say creator, some say no creator. But what is the purpose of this different philosophy? Same, to promote this deeper human value of love, compassion. To some people use concept of creator, creator, infinite love. We all created by that, that sort of or that kind of God. But can it be compassionate to help somebody who's suffering to die with dignity? Yes, of course. It's a compassion. The, I think almost, you see, the, after a few weeks of conception, conception, uh, mother's, still mother's womb, 
mother's peace of mind is very important for unborn child. Then as soon as birth, affection, love uh, from mother's from mother's face or from mother's sort of milk, there's immense sort of uh, sort of important factor to properly develop their physical, their brain like that. So then, at the end, you see, we must provide maximum affection. Let dying person more peaceful mind. There's people who believe heaven. Uh, I think the practice of love, showing love to other, is the best offering to God. God has infinite love. Love more important than life. Life depends on love. Life, of course, is important. Uh, life definitely not depend on violence. Life entirely depends on love. That I can say. <laughs> You've talked about your smile bringing people towards <laughs> free Tibet. You love to laugh. What What are the things that make you laugh? Do you Do you have a favourite joke? <laughs> no, I always you see uh, consider myself. Another just one human being. I of you see the, the, in the West or uh, many 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 sort of I think many cases you see people introduce mention their own name their own sort of profession these things. Uh, then then I felt oh not necessary to see, introduce that way just show the face human face mm. that's the best way to introduce yourself. You hate human. formality. Hmm? You hate formality. Yes, I I hate uh, I, I I really. Uh, I said they're boring about too much formality. <laughs> Unnecessary. So what makes you laugh? I think uh, laughing, smile is something I think unique about a human being. God give us that sort of special thing. So we have to utilize that. Uh, our unique thing, but still remain like tiger. <laughs> no use. <laughs> <laughs> before you go, before we finish, there are fans of Bradford City Football Club oh. who are desperate to know if you are still a supporter because ever since you gave them your blessing, they've improved their performance. Do you call yourself a Bradford City Football Club supporter? Do you call it? Really? Really? I don't know. Really? <laughs> they improved oh. after your blessing, so they want to know. Oh. They gave you a t shirt, they want to know if you're still Bradford oh. City Football oh. Club supporter. Then I think that uh, that event, I think, now gives me uh, myself you see, some belief about my blessing. <laughs> I'm very <really> skeptical <laughs> <laughs> about you see, the word of blessing. No. I believe action is more important. Blessing is something mysterious things. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, thank you. So, uh, if they believe with, uh, due to my blessing, they're more successful, and I feel very, very happy. <laughs> Next, here on BBC Four, pioneering rhythms and rich vocal harmonies as the blues beat picked up. We're heading back to the birth of rock and roll America for the start of a new series in just a moment. <laughs> 